Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Drum Dums Review Network. Tonight, we're going to review a dashing new little film called Late Night with the Devil. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's review Late Night with the Devil. Let's go. Late Night with the Devil stars David Dalsmalshian, Laura Gordon, Ian Bliss, and is directed by Cameron and Colin Carness. What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new 2024 review. We're going to review Late Night with the Devil, and I got to dedicate this to my friend Dan. Uh, Dan is one of my, I guess, critic buddies, right? And uh, we go to uh, critic screenings, and we see each other all the time. And he'd been asking me about this movie. Hey, did you get this screener for Late Night with the Devil? And he kept asking me over and over and over again. So much so that it, I, I guess it got implanted into my brain, and uh, I, I felt the need to watch it. I didn't know anything about this movie. So I checked out the trailer, and uh, I noticed that David Dasmalshian is in it, which I'm a big fan of his. Jack Darrow! Oh, good evening, Night Owls, and thank you for allowing me into your living rooms once again. This movie is so freaking unique, and uh, it's scary, too. It's got some scary shit in it, but I think is the novelty greater than the, the scare factor? I think they're about even, and I think that's what makes this movie so good. So anyway, let's jump into this. Let me give you a quick plot synopsis. Please be warned, anyone with young children in the room. Go to commercial, go to commercial. What you're about to see. You okay, Jack? It's <laughs> profoundly disturbing and shocking. I should have like one of those candles here, right? I did that in one of my old videos. Anytime I do like some kind of demon possession type movie, I, 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 sometimes I, I try to spruce it up, do some kind of gimmick. I don't know what I'll do this time. We'll see. So David Dasmalshian, he plays Jack Delroy. He is a late night talk show host. This is set in the 70s. And the beginning of this is interesting because it shows his rise to sort of semi-stardom. Uh, he's uh, constantly trying to uh, go up the ladder and he wants to surpass Johnny Carson. So Johnny Carson himself is kind of a character in this movie, even though they don't show Johnny Carson. But it's in that world. It's in the real world, even though it's a fictional show and a fictional character and really at the end of the day this movie is about fame and what we will, we will do for fame and these talk show hosts oftentimes they'll they'll cross the line sometimes to get notoriety and really at the end of the day to get the views to get those those ratings you can sort of compare this to the life of a, a youtube personality these days and how far we'll go to get views i mean wasn't it jake paul or his brother, I can't remember, and they, they kind of crossed the line and went to like the suicide force or something like that. This is easily comparable to today's climate. But what makes this movie so unique is really the novelty of it and how it feels like you're actually watching um, a 70s talk show, even down to the frame rate. You know, it, it's set up like, like you're watching it on a tube TV back in the day. If we watch uh, some of our streaming services and they show those old television shows and you'll see the, the you know the, the black bars on the right and left like you see on the screen here it, it sort of teleports you back to when you were a child and when you would watch these shows like when I was a kid I would watch freaking you know Sanford and Son and Andy Griffith's show you know uh, Brady Bunch even though those were before my time but these were syndicated shows back then and you can still find them today but the talk show circuit was pretty big back then, and Johnny Carson kind of ruled the, air, the airwaves, or the, uh, the, the TV waves. And nobody could catch him. And, and any comedian would do anything to, to sit on that, that couch, because that meant you could have a career. He had that much power. And so any talk show host back then, that'd be like the ultimate gift, to have that much power over the network. So this is sort of a, like a cross between network and The Exorcist. Um, you know, what if you kind of combined that world, you had a talk show, and, and knowing what they'll do to get ratings, and you invite this psychic and this young girl on the show, uh, the young girl's name is Lily, and the psychic is June Ross Mitchell, played by Ingrid Torelli and Laura Gordon, respectively. Now, speaking of frame rates, there are many of them in this, because a good portion of it is, you know, when they are live, you're gonna see the, you know, the four by three frame rate, but when they, you know, cut camera, and we get to see, you know, the behind the scenes, then it goes to black and white, and you get a full frame, 
And then there are certain sections of this movie that are your, your traditional like two, three, five ratio. There, and there's a few movies that do this. And I think this one works best because it's suited for the story. And I think it helps you differentiate between what's going on. David Desmalchian, I think, is a natural as a TV talk show host. He really just um, embodied that character. And he's such a great actor. He, he takes on so many different types of roles. You know, he's like a, almost like a character actor. He really is, but he happens to be, to be the lead. And I think our character actors, they are the unsung heroes of the industry. You know, oftentimes uh, a, a big moment in any movie or TV will come out of a, a character actor. I mean, take Hank from Breaking Bad. Without Hank, the, the show is only half of what it ended up b becoming. So, uh, you know, our character actors are really important. And David Desmalchian was perfect for this role. Now, as far as the scares, um, I think this movie is paced so well because you introduce the, uh, Lily, this character who you already know uh, there's a demon inside her called Mr. Riggles. And, uh, w you know, we're just waiting for it to come out. And I think that's what makes this movie so effective is not the actual uh, coming out of the demon, but uh, the inevitability of it. And, and, you know, just waiting for it to happen and you're just kind of gripping your chair because you never know when it's going to happen. Um, and then there's definite payoff. But it all fits into the story. It's not just scares for scares sake. You know, like say a lot of movies where they just have jump scares. We've got a place to jump scare every 15 minutes. No, this movie isn't set up like that at all. It's more of a slow burn and you're just kind of immersed into this 1970s TV world. Uh, and that's interesting. You know, I love novelty movies. Uh, to keep your attention. And you get to know Jack Delroy, the, the talk show host. You're going to make comparisons to Joker 2019. You know, you, you get what you fucking deserve. Uh, just imagine that little segment being an entire movie. You know, and how do you make that compelling? And they do it. Uh, and I think making it a horror movie is the perfect way to do it. Some really great effects in here too. There, I think there's a mixture, but I think there's more practical effects. You can tell that this was shot on a low budget. And, uh, you know, thank God for movies like this these days. I think we're getting tired of these $200 million movies. And it's so refreshing to have a, a lower budgeted movie like this that's so effective. It's almost to the point where if we read that a uh, budget of a movie is that high, we roll our eyes. And it almost makes us not want to see it. Because more times than not, it's usually, you know, bloated and not that great. But for me, anyway, when a, when a movie has such a low budget, uh, but there's some, some names behind it, you know, especially uh, like David Desmalchian, some great actors behind it, uh, that, that's going to get me in the door. And, and it's, a, you know, it's a possession movie, great stuff, a lot of nice surprises. With possession movies, you never really know where it's going to go, and it could really go anywhere. And they take elements of um, Jack's life you know, very much like they did in The Exorcist. They harp on the weaknesses of uh, a, a character. And it becomes a, a play between reality and fantasy. And sometimes you don't even know which is which. Uh, and there's also a live broadcast going at the same time. So you can imagine how enthralling that can be. But yeah, there are effects in this movie that are similar to like The Thing, which is crazy. Um, but also there's some effects that are just kind of suited to this movie that I haven't really seen before. I did get a little bit of a Halloween 3 vibe in this movie at times, which is cool. And I think you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. But man, this was really, really effective, really good, highly memorable. And I think you're going to be talking about this movie after you see it. So go see this movie this weekend, support it. You know, I want movies like this to uh, succeed and uh, you, you'll be thanking me. I promise this was excellent. Giving it a super, super high purchase worthy, um, I think it might not land for everybody because this does have some really creepy stuff, some stuff that might make you scratch your head, but they really send it home in the end. It's got a great uh, twist ending. So let me know your thoughts on Late Night with the Devil in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for all Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums and on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Become a channel member. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and drum them out.